In this video tutorial from Big Rock Designs, we're going to create this detailed composition combining a number of graphics. Throughout the video, I will be referring to the PDF notes that accompany the video. The first section will involve isolating your image, how to make a detailed selection of the image combining traditional selection techniques and masking. The second part will be the background and foreground color combining the graphics together to create that nice effect. The third part will involve levels and vibrance adjustments to just bring the detail back up in the images. And finally, we will have a look at cropping out any detail that we don't require. I hope you enjoy this video tutorial. In the first part of the video, we're going to explore isolating your image. You're going to learn how to open your image in Adobe Bridge, something that we use constantly with all our artwork. We're going to show how to make a detailed selection, how to modify your selection using masking, how to edit your mask in the properties panel, and how to fine tune those hair selections using rectangular marquee tool and brushes. With the main image opened, we're going to make a basic selection of the image using the normal lasso tool. You can use the polygonal lasso tool if you prefer. I find we get greater results with this just lasso tool. While you're making the selection, just ensure that you stay inside the object at all time. Try not to select any of the sort of background. So very simply, with the ordinary lasso tool, I'm just going to click and I'm going to work my way down around the image. Pretty happy with that selection, not really a huge amount to it. The next process will be to mask the image and to do this we're going to use the select and mask feature. This is only available if you're on an actual selection tool. I will select select and mask. Red will be the default color that's dictated by view mode. If you click the drop down you'll see this one is overlay but you can pick whichever one you prefer. By using the refined edge brush here we can add or subtract detail by painting that detail into the image. So just with an ordinary brush I can paint and work my way around the image. If you wish to make the brush bigger, use the right square bracket key. To make the brush smaller, it's the left square bracket key. I'm now going to just work my way around the image, painting in the detail. I'm quite happy with the selection that I've made. Now I'm just going to view the selection in the different view modes. And I find black and white can be very useful, just to give me an idea of how I'm getting on. And Looks, looks okay. There are a few problem areas here, but I'll fix those with masking. So I'm just going to go back to my overlay. The settings over at the side, now they are specific to the image, but in the notes, if you look at point F under edge detection values, I put in some general settings there, and they're the ones that I felt worked, worked best for this particular image. Starting off with the uh, radius, I went for a value of 10 pixels. Smart radius just to give me that little bit of a better selection. The global refinement, the smooth. The last thing I really want to do is smooth off the selection too much. So I went for 1. Feathering will blur the selection, so I felt 0.5 was enough. Contrast can be good for painting detail, for taking detail back in. For example, this area hasn't been, ex hasn't been selected. Contrast can be good for filling that in, but I find it can be very rough on the selection. So I'm going to leave it just at a value of 1%, which isn't a huge difference, and I'll paint this back in using my masking. Shift Age, I've left this at minus 5. I do find that this tool can bring in a little bit of the background, so it's actually just pulled the selection in a little bit, so I'm quite happy with that. Going ahead down, uh, decontaminate colors it'll try and remove that sort of halo effect sometimes it can happen. Output 2 if I use new layer with 
layer mask this means that I can go back in and I can re-edit the image easily afterwards so by, I've also selected remember settings just another image comes in I've got a starting point by selecting OK the image will be outputted so I'm quite happy with what I've got there this is a problem okay and this is a problem but I'll paint that in using my masking I'm now going to paint some detail back into the image anywhere here that's a very light color where it's actually previewing almost right through to the background is a problem that Im information isn't selected so I'm gonna to have to zoom into the image I'm gonna select my brush and I'm just gonna paint some detail back in when we're using masking the white color adds detail whereas the black color removes as you can see indicated by my mask I'm going to select the brush I've got the white color the brush is quite small so using my right square bracket key I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger and you see now if I paint on the image you'll see the detail is coming back in only problem is that the closer I get to the edge then I can start to bring in detail that I don't want and for that I would like I tend to use the polygonal lasso tool just to restrict my selection so I'm quite happy with what I have there problem areas tend to be maybe around here where I'd like a cleaner line but I just can't see my selection so I'm going to hide my mask then with the mask hidden it will allow me just to make a much cleaner selection in fact what I'll do is I'm going to bring the background layer on and you can see there that's the area that I want to work on so to do this I'm going to bring in my background and I'm going to hide the uh, mask layer I'll select my zoom tool and I'm just going to zoom in on the image the scrubby zoom is ticked by default the scrubby zoom works by clicking and dragging to the right which zooms in click and drag to the left to zoom out it's not a tool that I prefer to use for the untick scrubby zoom and it's going to draw a box around the image so this is the sort of area here that I want to get about but much more finer selection to achieve this I'm going to go to the polygon lasso tool I'm going to make a nice detailed selection the more time I spend on it the better a job I'll do So I'm happy with that now if I go back to my mask I'll hide the background I can see there this is the area that I want to bring in a little bit more detail and I've used the polygon lasso tool to constrain my selection I will select the brush and make sure white is at the front as white adds detail I don't need to worry but I'm going to go over the edge I can just very simply paint and you can see that detail has been brought in now the problem area here outside I'd like to remove this but I can't as the brush as the uh, selection is active so if I inverse my selection select the opposite I'll be able to then access this information to select the opposite I'll do select and inverse doesn't look like anything much has happened but you see the ants now running around the outside I will bring black to the front I'll swap my brush around so now if I paint you'll see there that that it will allow me to remove that information I can work my way around the image using this technique make the selection use the white brush to add information use the black brush to remove information the next part of our tutorial we're going to look at the background and foreground color we're going to learn how to apply color adjustments how to modify those adjustments using masking and how do you apply gradient masks to the images so they can blend into each other the next part of the exercise we're going to bring in our background images I already have opened the images and they're sitting here just in the tabs above I have also collapsed down the interface just to give me a little bit more screen space to work with to get the images into this one there's a couple of ways to do it perhaps my preferred way is just to click on the image drag it up when the tab changes drag the image down so I'm going to want this image here I'm going to also want this image duplicated and above 
to duplicate the image, a couple of ways to do it, but I think my preferred way is Command key and J, or Control J and Microsoft. I'm just going to click on the image, drag it up, and position it there. So that's all good. The next one then is the image, which will be a background, which will sit below this. So I've named it to background here. I'm going to click on the image, drag it up, tab changes, bring it in. So currently sitting here, but I would prefer it to be right down at the very bottom. It'll all become very clear when we start to mask the information out. The background layer, I don't need it. It will be, this one will be blended into the layers below. So I'm just going to select my background layer and I'm going to delete it. So with the layer selected, hit the backspace key on the keyboard. To be consistent with the notes, I have named the layers. So I'm going to rename my layers now just to follow the process that I have laid out in the notes. I hope you've gone ahead and then renamed the layers just the same as I've done, starting with foreground, background one, cutout, and background two. It's very important to be consistent with this naming convention. Now we're going to position and mask the background. To achieve this, I want you to add a mask to the background two layer. So with the layer selected, then click the mask button at the bottom of the layers palette. The next step will be to blend the background two into the background layer. To achieve this, I want you to select the gradient tool and we're going to apply a gradient mask. So with the gradient tool selected here, I then have a color of black and white. White, black will hide, white will reveal. So with the mask selected, it's very important that the mask is selected in this process. And as illustrated in the notes, I'm going to click somewhere around here. I'm going to have black at the front and white at the back. If I click here and I drag the mouse to the right, and the result will be the background two being blended into the background layer. I'll just hide the picture of the cutout so you can reveal to the effect a little bit more clearly. I want to repeat the process and I want to blend the foreground layer into the cutout hair. So it's just going to be exactly the same process, but this time I'm going to click further into the image. So we will select the foreground layer. I'm going to add a mask to that layer. Make sure that black is at the front, white is behind. I'm just going to click somewhere around here. Again, I've detailed this in the notes. I'll click somewhere around here. I'll click and I'll drag. And you'll see that's very nicely blended the back that foreground image into the cutout. Not, it's not in stone. You could try a few different variations of it, perhaps get a little bit more detail in, a little bit less detail. So you just experiment with that to get the effect that you like. In the third part of the tutorial, you're going to learn how to add and edit an adjustment layer, how to duplicate and how to delete an adjustment layer. To begin with, I want you to add the levels adjustment. Now I have hidden my adjustments layer just to give me a little bit more screen space to work with. So I'm gonna two clicks on adjustments and I'm gonna select my levels. Now levels works primarily with shadow detail. Um, I have some numbers illustrated in the notes, but it's really up to your interpretation of the image. Something to bear in mind is that this slider relates to the darkest colors in the image. This slider relates to the lightest colors in the image. And this slider relates to sort of the mid-tones to balance the color. So I'm going to just make the image possibly, I know part of my image is getting hidden here, but I'm going to make the image possibly a little bit darker. I'm going to then bring that in, probably lighten the face a little bit. And I'm going to bring it right in just a little bit more like that. I'm going to go a little bit too much with the levels. And I'm going to hide that because what I want to achieve now is I want to ultimately paint out anywhere where I don't 
want the effect. So I'm going to select my mask. I'm going to select a brush, my black hide, and with uh, a large brush with a very low opacity. I'll be able to be quite transitional with my effect. So I'm pressing the right square bracket to make it a little bit bigger. And it's a little bit too dark here at the side. So I'm just going to just sort of rub that out a little bit here. I do like the effect it's had on the model. I think that's been very effective. And if you look here at my actual levels, you will see these sort of gray, gray lines. And that's just where I've been masking the object out. I'm going to repeat the process and this time I'm going to add vibrance into the image. Now, what we find with levels, levels, although it does emphasize the shadow detail, color can suffer. So by adding vibrance, I can then just sort of bring some of that really nice rich color back into the image. So I'm not gonna shy away here. I'm gonna give it a nice big number. And then just a small amount of saturation, not too much with saturation because what that will do, uh, it will, it could completely change the colors in the image, which I don't want to happen. So I'm thinking something under, under 10, 9, 10. And again, if you feel, yes, you've just gone too far, there is a mask here. And with the mask, I'm going to just take out a little bit, take the edge off the color. So opacity I've got around 16 here so I'm just going to sort of let me just sort of paint that out a little bit and just a wee bit too much in the face and I think that's worked out quite nicely now finally I feel that the image is just sitting a little bit too much in the middle. I would like the image moved over a little bit more to the side. So I need to make sure I'm on the cutout layer. And I think it's probably easier just with that layer selected to use the arrow keys on the keyboard, just to nudge the entire thing over. Don't want to go too far as it'll start to disrupt the shadow or the levels effect. If by any chance the levels does get affected, I can easily go back in there. So I can select the uh, mask layer of the foreground. I'll select the gradient. And just with a little bit of experimentation there. Yeah, I quite like that. I think that's worked out quite nicely. I hope you have enjoyed this video tutorial from Big Rock Designs. And you'll see there in our notes just our link to our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages. And we'd love it if you could post your completed artwork onto one of our social media channels. Uh, if you like the video, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. And if you can give it the thumbs up, brilliant. So, thank you.